Hey everybody, it's Helen Hillix, your host from my heart to yours. I'm an intuitive counselor and licensed therapist. And today I'm going to be talking about how do you tell the difference between when you should fight and when you should let it go or when you should have compassion and when you should have the conflict. And is there a difference? Should you have compassion when you, <laughs> when you fight or should you just be angry when, when you really feel angry? So when to fight and when to shift yourself? And how do you tell the difference by using your intuition? Well, no one really lives happily ever after. I'm gonna just say that to start with. Everybody thinks that love should just be enough and you should just live happily ever after without any problem. And everybody knows that it's that's not reality, right? It, it really doesn't exist that way. It's perfectly natural to have conflicts and we need to stop expecting it or judging it in our relationships when we're not feeling that happily ever after. It's just natural, like I said, and love takes effort. I remember when I first got together with my husband and for a long time after that, actually, he kept saying, this is so hard, this, this couldn't be right because it's so difficult, it's so challenging. And I just kept saying, are you kidding me? I mean, it's like, this is life. Life is like that. Because it's challenging just means that it's a really rich experience. And anything that is a rich experience is gonna be challenging, right? If, if you expect life to just flow, you know, you're not gonna do anything ever in your life because everything that's worth having is challenging. So I wanna really make that point, I wanna bring that point home to start out with that if you're in a relationship that has a lot of conflict and there are lots of opportunities for you to resolve things, don't despair. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with your relationship. It means that there are things, there are challenges that you're gonna be facing so that you can grow and learn. And if you can do that, and come together through that growing and learning, then you're gonna have an awesome relationship. And if you can't, then maybe you're not meant to be together. But don't take the conflict itself as meaning that there's something wrong with your relationship. So let's move on from that point to say, I know that you guys have had the feeling of noticing that there's been a disconnection lately. You know, it's been days since you felt affectionate or sexual. It's been days since you felt romantic um, and wanting to be talkative together. It's been days since you had a meaningful conversation, perhaps. And, and this happens with many, many of us. I know it definitely happens with me. And then you begin to feel irritated. And often we start then looking for what's the matter, what's my husband or what's my wife done? Maybe it's because we haven't had sex. You know, she doesn't seem like she's really happy. She doesn't seem like she's in a good mood. You know, we start oftentimes looking at the other person and thinking that they're doing something. And I know that just recently, um, that's happened to me a couple of times with my husband where he said, you know, I don't feel connected to you. And I said, you know, is that an accusation? Because it sure sounds like one. And, you know, let's take a look at the facts. You know, is it really true that, that we're not connecting? And, you know, in this particular situation, it wasn't true. You know, I said, we, we went here, we talked about this, we've been, you know, we've been really connecting. And he said, yeah, I guess that's true. And then we, we got to dive deeper into the conversation. So I know you know what I'm talking about. You know, when you begin building a case that something's wrong and, and we often focus that something wrong on them. So that's when you just notice. And, and this is the first step, isn't it? Is that you notice something's off. And the first challenge is to not go into that blaming them for it. The first challenge is just to say, I notice something's off. I wonder what, and I wonder what's happening. 
And this is so important, guys, is the ability to go, to drop into that energy of being in the inquiry, not into blame and not into shame. Oh my God, I wonder if I did something wrong. That's also something I hear so often in counseling is that, you know, the wife or the husband will say, you know, I must have done something wrong because they don't want to have sex with me, or I must have done something wrong because we're not feeling connected. So it's not about you did something wrong or they did something wrong. It's about going into the inquiry. And sometimes when we go into the inquiry, we will find that there really is something that needs to shift. And one of us or both of us are picking up on that energy. It could be something very specific. I'll get into that in a moment. Or it could be that you're just, you know, you're, it really does happen sometimes that you're just drifting. You know, you're kind of drifting into your work day and you're not prioritizing your connection. And sometimes it really is just an easy shift that you need to make, an intentional shift that you need to make. But let's start out with kind of trying to decide whether there is really an issue or there isn't and how does intuition come into this situation? So, and the, the reason I'm talking about intuition is that sometimes it's really difficult to tell. You know, you can ask yourself the questions, and that is definitely the first place to start, is you got to do the footwork, like they say in AA. You know, you got to do the footwork. You, you get to ask yourself a bunch of questions first, and then you go to the intuition. But intuition is the ability to connect to higher consciousness, whether you think of that as God or divine energy or, you know, the force or the source, or you even think of it just as your higher self. You know, it doesn't matter how you think of it. It's the willingness to put aside any opinion you have, any agenda you have, and just ask. So I'll get into a little bit later about how you do that. And if you haven't watched my, uh, or, or listened to my podcast, or watched the YouTube video about how to check in, you know, that's the, that's the process that I use that I learned from Beth Green primarily. And that is the process of checking in and using your intuition, coming up with a yes or no question. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. And if you haven't ever listened to that podcast or watched that YouTube video, do that after, after you listen to this one. So first of all, let's start out with, again, you notice that something is happening. You notice that something doesn't feel right. That's the first step and the most important step, maybe, because if you don't notice it, you can't do anything about it, can you? So notice when things are off. Don't just try to smooth over them and jump over them and pretend that nothing's going on. This is actually the first kind of step of intuition, too, is just being aware. You know, self-awareness is an intuitive process because you're not invested in an outcome, you're just willing to open your heart and see and read the field and see if something's off. So you know, you know in your heart when something's off. So let yourself notice and then ask yourself, you know, when did it start? Is there some specific source? Oh yeah, I've been pissed off at him since I noticed that he hadn't picked the weeds that he said he was going to pick or I noticed that I've been pissed off because she spent money that we didn't talk about, even though we're on a tight budget. You know, sometimes there's a very obvious thing that has happened that has disrupted your connection. So look for that. You know, if you notice you're bickering, you know, look for, for a specific thing to see if there is such a thing. And also notice whether you're having a reaction and what kind of reaction it is. Are you angry? Are you hurt? Are you scared? Notice that about yourself. Very, very important thing as you go into working to resolve the disconnection is to notice your own energy. Are you trying in your own mind? Are you noticing that you're trying to find fault with them and that your energy is to make them wrong. I have done this so many times, I'm not 
proud to say it, but I definitely have done this many times with my husband where I want to make him wrong. I want to prove that he did something wrong. And of course, whenever I embark on a negotiation from that energy, what's going to happen? It's not going to go well, is it? So noticing the energy that you're coming from is unbelievably important in this endeavor of resolving the disconnection. And notice also, you know, if you, if you are aware that your reaction is really greater than the crime, so to speak, you know, if he didn't pick the weeds and you want to divorce him over it, it's like, hmm, <laughs> I think I better notice that that's a little bit of an overreaction to that specific thing. And, you know, even sometimes, honestly, this is going to sound weird, but I sometimes even finding out that he has had an affair and you saying, I'm going to divorce him. Sometimes even that is an overreaction. And it's because of this, because if you really are ready to divorce him over that, it probably is that this is the last straw, whatever it is. If you really, really are ready to divorce a person over one incident, it's probably because it's the culmination of many, many things. And this is the last straw. So just be aware of that also. And also, notice if there's something that you have been covering up. And now it's peeking its head out. At least ask yourself that question. Have you been going along in denial, pretending that everything is okay, and all of a sudden, you, you know, you're just furious at him for, or her, and it seems like it's kind of for no reason, notice that. Notice that, and probably what's happening is that there, there has been something wrong for a while, and you've been covering it up. And sometimes what, what you think is wrong is not really it, but there's something underneath that that is what's really the issue. Now, I'm going to give an example of that. Um, the other night, my husband said that he wasn't feeling connected. I said that already. And we talked about the fact that, no, we actually have been connecting. So I said, well, then something else is going on, you know, that you're feeling underneath. And he's, he, uh, you know, tried out a few things. And then he said, you know, I think that I don't feel like I'm doing enough especially I'm not doing enough compared to all you're doing. And I said, well, if you think you're not doing enough, then you probably aren't. And, and that was the truth. It was like something he didn't want to see about himself. And so it, he was covering it up with focusing on the fact that, that we weren't connecting in his mind. And, and, and it came out kind of as an accusation against me when really what was going on was he felt guilty that he wasn't doing enough. And I just want to use that as an example. He's given me permission to always use our relationship as an example because it's so helpful to have examples. And this is such a great example because it seemed in his mind like it was one thing, but it was actually a complete other issue. And that is so often what is going on, guys is that it's really something else that you've been in denial about. And often it's a some kind of self-hatred issue happening. And instead of feeling that very painful self-hatred, you make it be something about them. So ask yourself that, you know, is there something I'm covering up? Is there an issue that I'm feeling about myself that I'm covering up? And these are all very important questions that you need to ask. And, and like I think I said before, it's like AA says, you know, do your own footwork. Do the footwork before you ask God or the source to help you. Do your own footwork first. And that's this situation too, is show yourself that this relationship matters enough that you're willing to put energy into it. You're willing to hold yourself accountable because if you're not willing to put energy into your relationship and you're not willing to hold yourself accountable, you are not going to ever have a happily ever after situation. 
Because let's face it, there are happily ever after relationships, not every moment, but they are happily ever after because they continue learning and they continue growing together. They continue resolving their conflicts. So without effort and accountability, you're not going to get anywhere. So first you look at yourself and you ask yourself all these questions. And then once you've narrowed down the, the, the field of questions and, you know, identified your intention and reset your intention to, to resolving the conflict rather than proving anyone wrong, then you can go to using your intuitive process to narrow it down even more and to get some guidance. And, you know, some of those questions that we're asking before are not so easy and you might not be able to come up with something. But let's talk for a moment now about the intuitive process, which is the ability to set aside your agenda and your opinions. And, you, you, you know, there's a whole process for opening yourself energetically. And then you learn how, and as I said, I'll refer you to that other podcast, you learn how to check in, to ask yes and no questions in the format, for instance, of is it for the highest good of all, including me and my partner and everybody else, for us to just let this issue go and reconnect for today? And sometimes you both will hear yes, now, sometimes you'll hear yes because you really don't want to deal with it and it's honestly your ego masquerading as higher consciousness. But sometimes it really is higher consciousness guiding you to let this issue go for today and reconnect, to snuggle, to eye gaze, to do all the intimacy building things you know how to do. And you will know over time the difference between when your ego is masquerading as higher consciousness or intuitive guidance and when it's really intuitive guidance because you will notice from the result. So I'm not going to spend time talking about that either. That's something that you just get better and better at as you practice. Another issue or another way that you can ask that question is to, to higher consciousness is, is there something that I'm missing? about this feeling of disconnection. Very simple, is there something I'm missing? And you hear either a yes or a no. And then you go with that. And then you can also ask, is this something that we need to dive deeper into? And you get a yes or no. Now, why is this important? Because you can get into the habit of diving deep and digging and, and fighting and so forth over things when you don't really need to. And you can also avoid fighting for the sake of saying, oh, we get along great. And so you, you just avoid doing it and you never ask if you really need to dive deep on this one. And it helps so much because it reassures you that you're not going off half cocked, that you're not in an ego battle. It reassures you so much if you check in intuitively and you feel that you are being guided to do this conversation this way. And when you follow that guidance, will it always turn out the way you want? Well, of course not. But it's a big relief to know that you're not just being passive or defensive and that you are actually focusing on doing whatever you can to resolve, heal, nurture the relationship and give yourselves a chance for the relationship to progress. And sometimes it really is simple and what you will be guided to do is just be love. Now, some people, and I'm sure you've seen this many places in little love quotes and all of that, they say that just being love is all you need. And there is truth to that. Because even in conflict, even if you have to dive in and, you know, what my husband and I got a, about that the other night about um, the fact that he actually felt bad that he wasn't doing enough. He wasn't making enough of a contribution to our household uh, and to our marriage. And that was a, a conversation that we did dive into in a loving way. Even though at certain parts, you know, I felt angry because I was getting in touch with the fact that I did feel alone. 
And I did feel like, the, you know, and he got defensive, you know, well, I don't want to pull weeds, you know, that's beneath me or whatever. So, you know, it's like there were times when there was anger in the conversation, but we both believed and knew in our hearts that we were going through this process because we care about each other and that we want to resolve it and that we want to get past these things. And I think that is so incredibly important that people forget. So when you hear being love, it doesn't mean, guys, it does not mean that you're just lovey-dovey all the time. It means that you're willing to hold that energy of love so that you can create a safe container. This is my sister least favorite phrase, but I'm going to use it anyway, that you're creating a safe container in your relationship. Because if you go into fights knowing that your partner is going to attack you and try to make you wrong and undercut you, that is incredibly damaging to your marriage. That And, and you will never feel safe. And you know what, guys, you're not going to have good sex you're not going to have happy times if you don't feel safe with your partner. And that safety is much more of a challenge when you're fighting, isn't it? But you still can do it. You still can do it. You just have to practice it. So I, I think I want to emphasize that fact that being loved doesn't mean that you're all lovey-dovey. It means that your intention is to co-create a safe environment where love can flourish. So sometimes you can be angry and hurtful and, you know, there's, that is not being loving, is it? And so I want to just remind us that there are times when how you bring it up is absolutely as important as what you're bringing it up. It doesn't mean that you coddle each other, but it also doesn't mean that you're abusive in the name of just being honest, just being honest. You are an asshole. You know, that's not just being honest, that's being mean. So we get to intend to resolve the issue if we can because we care about each other and we want to create that safe environment. And using intuition can just be another tool that we bring in to resolving conflicts in relationships. And whether that conflict is about sex or money or we don't even know what it's about, you know, using intuition can reassure us. And it can also do another thing. It can help us get out our, get, get our own agenda out of the way. Because you have to let go of your agenda if you're going to really dive into the inquiry about what's going on and you're going to use the intuitive process to guide you. You have to get out of your own ego agenda. And that is half the battle, guys, in resolving things in a loving way. And you know what? I want to end on this note that sometimes it takes several talks. You know, it might not, but sometimes it does. Sometimes it's a process that takes weeks maybe even months, and sometimes it takes getting a counseling session or 10 counseling sessions, and sometimes it doesn't. But we get to be willing to do whatever it takes. That's something that I learned you know, a long time ago, is you want a partner who's willing to walk over hot coals to be with you. That's what we all want. That's what makes us feel safe. And I'm giving you the tools to help you be able to walk over hot coals for your partner. And you know, you you get to be able to do whatever it takes, even if it makes you really uncomfortable. That's the way it is if you're going to create that happily ever after. And then the last thing I want to say is that sometimes it really is easy. Sometimes you've just gotten astray because you're both working really hard and you just have lost the priority to be sexual or to be affectionate or whatever. And all it takes really is just to shift that. 
this happened to me uh, recently as I was feeling disconnected from my husband. And I realized that, you know, it was so easy for me to get into blaming him just like he was blaming me. And I just decided, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I just felt guided again, intuitively, that I was going to recommend, let's go to bed and I want to spoon you to sleep tonight. And that's one of his favorite things is if I spoon him to sleep. And then the next night, we decided that for a while, however long it lasts, we're going to spoon each other on alternating nights. And it is such a loving and tender way to go to sleep. And so sometimes it's just that simple, guys, that there really is nothing in the way but life. And you make an intentional, intuitively guided shift in your energy toward giving some loving thing to your partner and the energy just dissolves that energy of disconnection just dissolves so practice all these things guys email me if you have questions at helen at helenhillix.com you can look up you know on my website at helenhillix.com and you'll hear all the other ways you can connect to me in my uh exit talk so i love you all thank you for being here and i will see you next week